Hello, everyone. This is Professor He again. Nice to see you all. The topic of this task is about the system. I believe you have heard this word before, but what is system in our class? Well, a system is defined as a quality of matter or a region in space chosen for study. The mass or region outside the system is called the surroundings. The real or imaginary surface that separates the system from its surroundings is called the boundary. The boundary of a system can be fixed or movable. Note that the boundary is the contact surface shared by both the system and the surroundings. Mathematically speaking, the boundary has zero thickness, and thus it can neither contain any mass nor occupy any volume in space. System may be considered to be closed or open, depending on whether a fixed mass or a fixed volume in space is chosen for study. A closed system contains a fixed amount of mass and no mass can cross its boundary. That is, no mass can enter or leave a closed system, but energy in the form of heat or work can cross the boundary. And the volume of a closed system does not have to be fixed if, as a special case, even energy is not allowed to cross the boundary, then that system is called an isolated system. Consider the piston cylinder device. Let's say that we would like to find out what happens to the enclosed gas when it is heated. Since we are focusing our attention on the gas, it is our system. The inner surface of the piston and the cylinder form the boundary. And since the mass is crossing this boundary, it is a closed system. Notice that energy may cross the boundary and part of the boundary may move. Everything outside the gas, including the piston and the cylinder, is the surroundings. An open system or a control volume, as it is often called, is a properly selected region in space. An example when open system with one inlet and one exit is shown. It is usually encloses a device that involves mass flow such as a compressor, turbine, or lolo. Flow through these devices is best studied by selecting the region within the device as the control volume. Both mass and energy can cross the boundary of a control volume. A large number of engineering problems involve mass flow in and out of a system and therefore are modeled as control volumes. A water heater, a car radiator, a turbine, and a compressor all involve mass flow and should be analyzed as control volumes instead of as control masses. In general, any arbitrary region in space 
can be selected as a control volume. There are no concrete rules for the selection of control volumes, but the proper choice certainly makes the analysis much easier. If we were to analyze the flow of air through a lot of for example, a good choice for the control volume would be the region within the lorry. The boundaries of a control volume are called a control surface, and they can be real or imaginary. In the case of a lorry, the inner surface of the lorry forms the real part of the boundary, and the entrance and exit areas form the imaginary part, since there are no physical surfaces there. A control volume can be fixed in size and shape, as in the case of a lado, or it may involve a moving boundary. Most control volumes, however, have fixed boundaries and thus do not involve any moving boundaries. A control volume can also involve heat and work interactions just as a closed system, in addition to mass interaction. In addition to closed or open systems, we have other particular systems. One, a dependent system. No heat exchange within the surroundings. Two, non adiabatic system. There is heat exchange with the surroundings. Three, isolated system. There are no mass, no heat, and no work exchanges with the surroundings. Four, non isolated system. There is mass or heat or work exchange with the surroundings. Now, let's look at the relationships of the systems. There are four systems. Systems 1, 2, 3, and 4. Individually, both system 1 and system 2 are open systems. By the way, can you figure out the reason? Both system 3 and system 4 are closed systems. However, a new system consisted of system 1 and system 2 becomes a closed system. A new system consisted of system 1, 2, and 3 becomes an adiabatic closed system. A new system consisted of systems 1, 2, 3, and 4 becomes an isolated system. This means an isolated system can be formed by the non isolated systems and the surroundings. This idea is very important in our class. This subtask introduces the simple compressible system. This is a very important model in the thermodynamics. A system is called a simple compressible system in the absence of electrical, magnetic, gravitational motion, and surface tension effects. The state of a simple compressible system is completely specified by two independent intensive properties. These effects are due to external force fields and are negligible for most engineering problems. 
Otherwise, an additional property needs to be specified for each effect that is significant. If the gravitational effects are to be considered, for example, the elevation z needs to be specified in addition to the two properties necessary to fix the state. For the simple compressible system, the system exchanges heat and one kind of work due to the volume change. The volume change work depends on the pressure and the change of volume of the working substance. Commonly used working substance for thermal power equipment is compressible fluids. Most of the systems discussed in thermodynamics are simple compressible systems. Okay, that's all for this task. Thank you very much and see you next time.